Hello everyone, uh, this is Brock Skaggs. I'm going to make this video uh, talking about recursive procedures. And so I'm talking about uh, functions or subroutines that call themselves recursively. And so what I mean by recursion, um, basically I've got, say, a subroutine uh, that's going to continually call the same, call itself. So a subroutine called um, sub1 is going to have some code, and in that code it's going to call back sub1. And it's going to call back sub1 over and over again. And so if you're not careful, you can create an infinite loop there. Uh, but in somewhere in there, I'm also going to have some sort of test that's going to knock us out of this recursion, uh, this recursively calling over and over again. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, does take a little bit of um, work to, to get familiar with as far as the concept. Uh, but once you are getting comfortable with it, uh, it can help you out quite a bit and allow you to do some fairly complex things. Um, examples that I've worked with is this Coach Snowflake um, basically is a uh, fractalish uh, kind of geometry where you've got these series, this collection of edges, and for every edge in that collection, you've got to look at it. You've got to then take its length, divide it by three, and in the middle third of the length, uh, draw an equilateral triangle. And you just recursively call a subroutine over and over again to look at the collection of edges, perform that equilateral triangle creation on the middle third uh, process, and go again and again. Uh, we'll try to do it with. Uh, some Fibonacci number sequence. And so the Fibonacci numbers, uh, if you're not familiar with them, they go 0, 1, 1, and then every number after that is the sum of the previous two numbers. And so it goes 0, 1, 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, so on and so forth there. And so we'll see if we can create a subroutine uh, to basically populate a collection uh, recursively to generate a list of Fibonacci numbers. And so with that term, I'll write a sub called develop numbers. Got the sub keyword there. And well, this will be what we call over and over again. Um, at some point we'll be done, and I'll write another sub to display those on the immediate window. And so we need a collection, so I'll say dim fibnums add the collection, and here I need to put in as new collection to, to new it up here. Um, also, I'm going to need some max value, so um, we're not just going to endlessly create Fibonacci numbers, but we're going to create all Fibonacci numbers less than or equal to some value. And so I'll say some constant value, max val as integer equals 200. And so we're going to create all Fibonacci numbers less than or equal to value 200. And so with this, I'm going to start thinking about it. You think, well, I'm going to have a few different cases here. Um, because the first time I go through here, I need to be able to put a zero in. Next two times, it's got to be one. Um, but after that second one, I've got to start um, doing that re um, rule that says the nth Fibonacci number is the sum of the previous two Fibonacci numbers. And so I can uh, figure out where I'm at in that in terms of the count of this collection. And so I would say something like, well, if fibnums.count is equal to zero, then it's empty, and I can do something. Else, if fibnums.count is equal to one, then I can do something. Else, if fibnums.count is equal to two, do something. And then after that, I'm at the end. LSF. And so. If fibnums.count is equal to zero, that means there's nothing in the collection. Well, I know the first element in this collection has got to be zero. And so I'll just say, well, fibnums.add is zero. If there's only one thing in the collection, that means that it's the element zero. And so I know the next one is going to be one. So I'll go fibnums.add one. And at one point, I'm going to have some sort of next value in here. And so I'll just put that up here. Uh, my next value is going to be when I start doing this, because as soon as we get to dot count is two, well, when the count is currently two, I'll have zero and one in there. Well, I know the next one's going to be a one. But now I'm going to start thinking about, okay, now all of a sudden I've got three things in there. And so I need to start testing the, the next val. And so I'll say next val. I can actually do it here, now that I think about it. Let's say, next val is equal to fibnums.count, which would be 
the first one when I wrap it in the fibnums. And so what I'm doing here is using fibnums.count as the index and I'm passing that back into fibnums and so that'll be the one as in zero one that one and then I can add this to fibnums fibnums.count minus one and that'll be the very first element there and actually I can do this for all the other ones right if it's greater than or equal to two because then that's going to be happening there as well and really now that I look at this if it's zero it's one something it's one something uh, after that it's going to be two so I can just put else next val is equal to this uh, so now that I got that next val in place, we need to test it, right? And so I would say something like if next val is less than or equal to the max val, then do something else and if. And if this max val, next val ever gets bigger than max val, then I can print out. And so this statement here is going to be when we are done. And so I'll say public sub display numbers, display nums. And when I go to display numbers, all we're going to do is print them to the screen, the immediate window. So I'll say for i equals one to uh, no, fib nums count next i. And I'll say debug.print fib nums sub i. And so once this iterates or this returns into false right if next val ever gets greater than, greater than max val then it's time to be done and we'll just display i can spell it right down here nums okay but if it's not we're going to have to add next val to the fib nums right and then we will call develop num again and we'll do this recursively over and over again uh, so we did a lot of bit of typing here and let's just go ahead and try it. f5 and I immediately get out of stack space here on develop numbers and so something's gone wrong and let's start walking through it um, very common that we're going to end up with this and so I'm just going to put fibnums in my watch and see what happens and so first time through I added it in here item was zero next val currently is zero and then it's making me add another zero in well now it's going to be always oh, zero plus zero is equal to zero and it's going to keep going over and over again so there's got to be some condition of when I get added in here uh, in this case I don't want to add it into until what how many things have to be in there well, for this to happen, there's got to be at least three things in there, right, at this point. If fibnums.count is greater than or equal to three, then we'll add it in there, and then we'll call. Uh, so let's just see if this fixes the problem. If not, we'll step through. And so here, I'm back up in here. I'm hitting F5. We're still out of stack space. Um, but let's see what happens. We might be making some progress. It's just hard to see at this point. And so what I'll do is I'm going to rerun. We add the watch. Fibnums. And let's start stepping through. Alright, so first thing happens. Fibnum goes through. It's count is zero, so we add zero. So now it's got one item, and the item is the number zero. We'll go through. Next value is currently going to be zero. Because we don't get it calculated at all but the count is not going to be greater than or equal to 3, it's equal to 1, so we just go and develop fibnums, so we're back in it again. Well now the count is 1, so we add a 1 to it. Again the count now is 2 at this point, you can see it in my watch, that there's two items in here, so then we're going to keep going. Now that there's two of them, we can add it. Well next val is now 1, and this next val needs to get added in, but we're not going to let it, right? Because next val, because there's now currently two things in the list, 
and that's where our issue is. We need to have that next valve go into the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is change that over to 2 and rerun this thing. Um, I'll just go ahead and hit F5. Let's see if it fixes that problem. So the first time through it picked up the 0. Now it's picking up that first one. And then it picked up the 0. And so we've got another issue we've introduced here. And so let's go ahead and see that a little bit better. First time it went through it hits the 0. That's great. Second time it goes through, hits the 1. That's great. But then it added the 1. Ah. So we need this to be strictly greater than 2. Because when it hit the 1, we added it in there. Now it becomes 2. Now we're adding in next valve, which is not there. And so what we could do is add in strictly greater than 2. Or another option would be, hey, as soon as we do this, let's get start calculating next valve in this statement here. And so that way we can leave it at 2, except for next value is going to be added at this point. And so let's try that again. F8. First time through, it's 0. That's not been a problem. Second time two, we added it in. Now it's got two elements. Next value can now be calculated. Next value is now currently 1. And we've got the 1 in there. Very good. And so now we're developing through. Now the count is 3. Here we're at the right spot, right? We hit this one, which is exactly what we wanted. Now the next valve is 2, and we added it in. Things are looking good at this point. Now the next valve is 3. Very good. See how I'm just stepping through here, just making sure everything's looking good. Um, that looks promising, and so I'm just going to hit my breakpoint down here, remove this one, see if it'll run to display nums. Display nums did get hit. Let's see what the fib nums is at right now. Yes, very nice. I've got items. 1 through 13, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144. If I check at this point, if I add item 12 and item 13, it is above 200, so that looks good. And so now we're in good shape. That was the complex part of that recursive call. And so then um, we'll just hit F8, and now we're down into the display num subroutine. And so I'm just going to let it run out the rest of it to display those in the immediate window, as you can see there. Uh, so there's an example of using uh, recursion. Uh, notice that it is a little bit more difficult to do. Uh, it probably will take you some debugging. Um, notice there, um, I had to go back through and debug. Uh, my best suggestion for you to do is to do exactly what I was doing. I'm kind of happy it happened in this video uh, because it forced me to put some breakpoints in, uh, basically step through the code line by line, seeing what needed to be adjusted each time there until I was able to, to get it right there. And so it's a very natural thing. Don't be discouraged if that starts happening to you. Um, it's just something that's going to happen to everybody, and you just have to sit there and logically think through what's causing each action in your program. And so hopefully this at least gives you a feel for what recursion looks like, um, and you can then implement it when you see fit in your program. And so thanks for watching the video. Hopefully this helps.